Hey guys, Dr. Ray Marquez here, your local chiropractor at Back Pain Relief Center. And this is our latest edition of Dr. Ray TV. Um, today is Monday, February 6th. It's about, I don't know, 5 o'clock or so. So um, today our topic is chronic pain and spinal stenosis. So um, if you had never heard of that and you don't um, know what it is, and you probably don't have it, so you won't have to worry about it a little bit. But um, if you have neck or back pain and you've been dealing with it and you've heard those words, I'm sure that um, you're pretty familiar of what it can be causing you. And I go over these topics because um, I see it a lot in my office and particularly with um, low back pain and, and really neck pain also, I, I do uh, see quite a few patients that have spinal stenosis. And I wanna start by saying just because you have that doesn't mean that a chiropractor can't work on you. In fact, I think it's probably um, very beneficial that you have a chiropractor work on you. So first, let, let's go over kind of what it is and we'll try to make this nice and simple for you. Um, number one, if you have spinal stenosis, it's usually um, from some severe degeneration that you've had over the years that's gone untreated or not treated properly and your spine is degenerating and it's making the hole where the spinal cord is smaller. So um, I got a little model here and I'll try to go over it as best I can um, since I'm taping this on my um, phone. So um, that's a lumbar joint or at least a model of a lumbar joint. And what we have here is um, we have two lumbar vertebra. I'm trying to get that. And in the center is a disc and kind of there's a hole right there where the nerve comes out. And that disc is a shock absorber between the two bones. So the thing that goes the most or really on all of us and I think just about everyone out there is that this disc degenerates and it degenerates because of constant pressure or dysfunction on that joint. We all get it. Um, it probably starts in our late 20s to early 30s and it progresses so everyone has a degenerative process. Some people may be a little more um, or have a high propensity for it because of a lot of things like genetics, um, environmental factors, lifestyle, um, previous accidents, all kinds of things. So anyway, when we look at it, this, so here's the same model and I'm looking um, uh, at a cross view or, uh, or axial view. This is the center, this is the disc, okay? So the disc is here, let me use my pen. We have the spinal cord and the nerves coming out. The center of a disc is squishy, it's kind of like a shock absorber between the two bones. Um, the outer part is like a leather belt that holds it in. And when we squeeze that disc, the center uh, sometimes goes either to the front or to the back, depending on where the pressure is. And that's where we get herniated disc, bulging disc, protrusion, things like that. The name of what we call it is really irrelevant considering I've seen the smallest of bulges cause patients quite a bit of pain. And I've seen very large herniations just in the wrong spot and people don't even know they have them. So um, don't get tied up on the name. If there's a disc problem, there's a disc problem depending on where that disc pushes is what type of problem. So with this one here, okay, this is a representation of a herniation. Sometimes they push out on one side, sometimes they push out on both sides. Sometimes it'll go all the way across what they call a concentric disc bulge where the whole center pushes out. Now depending on where it pushes out is what type of problem we have. So if that bulge pushes out to the front here where the spinal cord is, then it's usually some localized back pain um, and we don't have any radicular problems or pain going down our leg or down our arms and things like that. But when it pushes out to the back where 80% uh, of them push out, if it gets near the nerve or the spinal cord, that's when we have some issues. So number one, the disc can degenerate. Number two, the joints, and if we're talking about a lumbar joint, the facets, okay, this joint here that it rides on can degenerate. And you may hear words like facet arthropathy, and they're all just big words to explain to doctors what we're looking at. It just means that this joint has worn out and it's gotten arthritic and it's inflamed and it can actually get a little bigger. So the disc can degenerate. Number two, the, the, the facet joint can degenerate. Also, the vertebral body or the bottom of it and the top of it for that matter, can become arthritic and you can have spurs in there and that begins to degenerate. So instead of being nice and smooth, it can um, become rigid and not move properly and cause some problems. There's also um, some ligaments that go down to the front and back behind the spinal cord that hold the joints together and um, they can infold or they can become uh, bigger and uh, cause 
um, some problems. So I went over those three different areas to, to let you know that there's multiple areas in this joint that can generate pain and there's multiple factors why we get spinal stenosis. So a couple main factors are when the disc pushes back towards the hole where the nerve comes out or the spinal cord is, that's what spinal stenosis is. When the ligament in there gets bigger um, from overuse or from some degeneration, that can contribute to the spinal stenosis or a smaller where, a small hole where the um, spinal cord is and the facets can contribute to it. So to get back what spinal stenosis is, it's when the hole that the, nerve, the spinal cord goes through becomes smaller because of factors that are lying around it. So the disc, the joints, the ligaments, the muscles, all that, the bone has made it smaller. So that can cause someone quite a bit of pain. And what I've seen in my office is, especially with low backs, rotational movements or twisting really flares um, that spinal stenosis up. So when patients get this diagnosis, especially from um, their uh, medical providers, they get very hesitant to go see chiropractors. And I'm not sure why, but I'm here to tell you that I've had a lot of success with um, helping alleviate some pain with the spinal stenosis. Now, in no way am I saying that I can correct it because once you get that far that you've had spinal stenosis and you have that much degeneration, the, uh, the fix-it ship has sailed. You know, right now, at that point, we're looking at a... Um, at a management process. So you're gonna to have to try to manage the flexibility, the functionality, um, the inflammation of that joint to try to keep your symptoms at bay. And many, many times when we get to the point where it's spinal stenosis, it's a team approach. I think multiple doctors, whether it's chiropractic, physical therapy, um, pain management, orthopedics, or just your primary doctor, I think you have to find what works well for you to get you back to an okay spot for you. So um, what are our goals with spinal stenosis or how do I believe that we can help you? It all falls back into what I continue to talk about. We need to decompress the joint. So that joint there that has compressed or gotten really tight, okay, we have to figure out a way to try to get some pressure off there to hopefully let that disc push back and get away from that spinal cord or the nerve. So decompressing the joints, number one, we got to take the pressure off of it. We need to realign the joint this way. It's not dysfunctional. So if it's misaligned or subluxated, like some chiropractors may say, um, it's dysfunctional and doesn't work correctly. We need to decrease the inflammation and um, we can do that very conservatively by using um, cold laser or low level laser, um, electric stim, ice, um, some over the counter anti-inflammatories. Um, there's a lot of nutritional things out there that you can do. On the medical route, which is okay, um, um, there's whether it's an oral steroid or it's an NSAID or whatever the medical doctors deem necessary for your particular body, um, taking some appropriate medication to get the inflammation down when you have this is, is, is a good thing. Um, the whole goal when we try to work on these things with spinal stenosis, again, is to decompress the joint, realign it, increase range of motion, decrease inflammation. And we do that by using a series of um, manipulations, a series of um, stretches and some home exercises. Um, a manual spinal manipulation may not be appropriate for you dep depending on the amount of stenosis you have. That's why we have instruments that we use. Um, that's why we have um, very specific stretches for that part of the body in order to help decompress the joint. Um, Manipulation under anesthesia has been known to um, drastically increase the mobility of the spine um, by breaking up adhesions and scar tissue in the joint, so that's another good approach. Um, getting some appropriate medical care is always, is always, is always top there too and, and may be necessary for this. So again, spinal stenosis is a severe degenerative process that you've had probably throughout the years, whether it was ignored in the beginning years or it's ignored now, however it happened, it's there. The fix-it the fix ship most likely sailed. We have to manage it at this point. I think chiropractic has been shown to be very effective um, and safe to uh, manage uh, spinal disorders, especially spinal stenosis. Um, medical pain management or interventional pain management also works well with it. Um, just seeing your primary um, uh, your primary orthopedic or whoever, someone to, um, to 
help assist in getting you back to your normal spot. All right, I hope that helps someone out there. If anyone's interested in manipulation under anesthesia or spinal manipulative therapy, please message me. We can talk about it a little more. I guess the big point of this whole talk was if you do have spinal stenosis, chiropractic may be able to help you. Um, don't be shied away from it. Um, just make sure you go to a competent doctor. Um, I think I'm one of them, so you can give me a call. And I think that's it. So that's our edition of Dr. Ray TV for our Monday issue. And uh, we will talk to everybody soon. If you have anything you'd like me to talk about, please shoot me a message. Have a great evening. Bye-bye.